I just learned about a job that I would have never imagined would actually exist, let alone be successful. A baby name consultant. That is a real profession right now. I'm expecting parents aren't coming up with names on their own. They're hiring baby name consultants. Can you believe such a thing exists? Some parents turning, I, unbelievable, to naming consultants on platforms like TikTok to help them find the perfect fit. The baby naming industry has sort of blown up. Colleen Slagan owns Naming Baby. She charges between $250 to $400 for her consultations, and business is booming. Charging $250 to $400 doubloons for some names. I spit that shit out for free every time I create a character in Dark Souls. I love how she refers to it as a baby naming industry. They found a way to monetize just giving name suggestions. You can do that for free. <laughs> like, ask ChatGPT if you really get desperate. Or you can just Google names right now and get an infinite list of it without paying a penny. To pay hundreds of dollars for a list of names is absolute insanity to me. She justifies it by saying she spends hours on personalizing and customizing the suggestions. So for $250, you get 10 suggestions. For 400, you get 30. And from what I've seen, her suggestions are just normal names. It's not like she's creating fucking brand new vocab words here. She's not speaking in the language of the gods or anything, bestowing upon your newborn this powerful title or anything. It's just like standard names like Olivia or Liam or Phil. Like it's nothing crazy. Like, yes, she'll like personalize it based on some of the things like the couple will say to her like, hey, my wife really likes flowers and I really love boar's head pickles. And then she'll come back and be like, okay, well name your daughter Daffodil or Sprout or Sunflower. And you can name your son uh, Dill. Like, it's, it's nothing super interesting or unique, and it's certainly not worth hundreds of dollars. Why is a name so important? You know, it's the first choice you're making as a parent. It's the first sort of identity, piece of identity you're giving to your child. Um, and a lot of parents, like, they're looking for something really specific. Obviously, a name is extremely important, but I feel like I'm boofing crazy pills here, because why would you be paying hundreds of dollars for someone else to name your child for you, basically? They are basically the ones that are just giving you this list that you choose from, and you probably feel obligated at that point, since you spent money on it, to just settle on one of those names. That doesn't seem like a recipe for success. Holly and Eric Stein own a postpartum meal delivery service and are expecting baby number three at the end of August. I don't think I even knew something like this existed. They've been struggling to find a name that will sound good with their two kids, Rory and Blair. They hired Colleen and now have a top few to choose from, but are waiting until baby's arrival to make a final decision. It was obvious that she had put a lot of thought into this um, and they all went with the vibe. What are you looking for? At the end of the day, it's their money. They can throw it in the toilet however they want. I'm not going to break into their house and slap the dollar bills out of their hand before giving it to a baby naming consultant or anything. But to me, it just seems like a real symptom of how everything needs to be monetized and that's becoming more and more normalized. How even something as simple as just name suggestions is all of a sudden a massive business at this point. That's just so fucking dystopian to me. I'll go ahead and break the magician's code here and reveal some great names for free. If there's any expecting couples out there, please feel free to use these. There's no royalties on them. Copyright free, no trademarks. A name that I've been really defaulting to recently is Jericamo. It's a name that's derived from a very strong source, my buddy Aaron. He came up with this name and I think it just sounds really fucking cool. So I think Jericamo is a really great choice. Another one that I've always really appreciated is Avagantimos. Uh, it was a name that I came up with on the spot a long time ago when playing a horror game called Penumbra, which could also serve as a cool name. Penumbra sounds awesome. It's like a, like a cool Pokemon, you know? But yeah, Avagantimos makes it sound like some kind of ancient gladiator. There's also Geth, which I think is a really cool sounding name from Mass Effect. If you've played Mass Effect, that name will have even more meaning for you. Mass Effect 3's base ending was absolutely atrocious, but it doesn't mean that the name Geth is sullied in any way. Plus, the DLC did help with the Mass Effect 3 ending anyway, so Geth could be a strong option. There's also Glarb, which is a frog in Magic the Gathering from their new set Bloomborough, and Glarb sounds great. There's Bilgist, 
which is something I made up right now, and I'm recognizing that that's probably not a strong choice. Your kid will absolutely be subjected to bullying and being made fun of for that, so don't go with Bilgist. But all the other options I listed, those are cool, and I didn't charge you a penny for those. She provided examples on her website about how a consultation kind of goes, so after you fork over a few hundred bucks, this is kind of what you can expect. You'll send her a message kind of going over the situation, all of the lore. So in the example here, they explain that they're not loving any of the names they brainstormed for baby number two, the sequel. They have a daughter named Lola. There's a couple names they're considering like Killian, Otto, Merrick, etc. And for the most part, they're not nicknamed people. They kind of want more uncommon names. That's basically the gist of it. Colleen then takes in all this information and starts computing. She gives her opinion on the names they're considering, as well as giving them her impression of their style. So she says their style feels very vintage, timeless, and ahead of the trends, and that she gets a guy in the beanie at the coffee shop, old soul kind of vibe. Which honestly almost sounds like an insult. Those sound like fighting words. I'm surprised an argument wouldn't break out in this example here. Like, what do you mean? That's not my vibe at all. But then she gives her perspective on the names that were vetoed and all in all it basically just kind of plays out like taking an old buzzfeed quiz like it doesn't really have anything super useful here it's just her kind of just saying about the names and the impression she gets then she gives her name suggestions and i'll go over a couple of them so she said that the common denominator between all of their names is that they are uncommon so she tried to keep that in mind and then came up with jennings I'll go ahead and take the liberty of vetoing that one on behalf of the couple. That feels like it's the polar fucking opposite of the vibe they were looking for. Jennings sounds like a butler. That sounds like someone Bruce Wayne would have hired for a minute if Alfred went on vacation. She then goes on to try and explain why she came up with that name and says that it feels related to Jameson but a little more unique and a little less preppy. Completely disagree. That sounds like one of the preppiest names you can have. She then says that she thinks Lola and Jennings both have the cool factor and make a great sibling set. Whatever that mumbo jumbo means. Her next suggestion was Briggs or Brig. She then says that it's another surname that reminds her of Banks, but a little less Mighty Duck. It feels like a fresh take on Brooks, which is getting quite popular. I knew a kid growing up named Brig, Hard G, which I actually like better though more likely to be mispronounced. Surnames that end in an S have a slightly preppy feel, but Briggs also brings a lot of Western feel to add a little grunge to that prep. I like how she says that names that end in an S have a slightly preppy feel, and her previous suggestion was a name that ended in S and said that it felt less preppy. So that feels like a bit of a contradiction there, but I'm not a professional baby namer. Maybe I'm just not familiar with the the subtleties and the nuance of baby naming consultancy. The example ends with her giving a couple other names like Hugo and Remy and closing by saying, I hope that this baby name consultation has given you some food for thought and either helps you feel more sure of one of the names on your list or has given you some new ideas to consider happy naming. I'm guessing this is where the communication ends? Like this is where they cease contact? I, I'm not really sure how this works, but I was looking up if you get a refund if you don't like any of the names that she suggests. Or if you can request additional names for no extra charge if you just didn't like any of the, the first batch. And I can't find anything on that. I don't know if I'm just missing it on her website. It, it's kind of set up in a weird way. But just imagine paying $250 for 10 names and you don't like any of them. What a huge colossal waste of cash right there. I feel like you should be able to give your input on it and see if like maybe you two can come together and iron out like the perfect name because who we if you're paying four hundred dollars i would expect that you and colleen here would really work hard to pinpoint that motherfucking name that's a lot of money to get suggestions that maybe you don't even like so i i can't find any information on what happens if you don't like the names uh, but I still think that this job is such a weird one. This is something people do for free and should be free. You're just asking for naming suggestions. Why are you going to be charging hundreds of dollars for that? But anyway, just had to talk about this a bit. That's it. See ya.